Hey, I want to thank you for coming back on Sunday night and joining us for our evening service. I know you're going to be blessed with the message tonight, and so I ask you to listen to it, and I'll be back afterwards to uh, wrap up with a few closing words. I was thinking about what I would speak on tonight and share with you, and I, I know this morning we talked about <laughs> Thank you guys for being so faithful. They're, they're ready on this side. They're ready for the word. They don't want to hear me. They're ready for the word. Uh, um, but I was thinking about what I'm going to talk about tonight. And uh, uh, I know we talked a little bit about this morning, about 2019. And I've, I've been thinking about, you know, what do we do in 2019 that really makes a difference? And, and so we're going to talk a little bit more. Uh, we're going to talk some about that tonight in growing more like Jesus. And I think in 2019, I want to be more like him than ever before. Amen. And so uh, let's go to our word and we'll read Ephesians 5, chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 15 through 17. It says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what will of the Lord is. Father, I love you, and I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you, God, that today in this place, around these altars, your convicting power moved, and it drew people to that love and that grace that only you can give. And Father, lives were changed today, and I thank you for that, Jesus. Father, I thank you for extending your grace and your love to a sinner like me. Father, I ask you tonight that you will draw us close to you. Help us to have a deep desire to be like you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So tonight, uh, if I had to choose a title, I would to choose to title this something about growing to be like Jesus, or maybe we want to make it our 2019 resolutions to be like Jesus, or maybe we could just say, let's look at how we become more God-like, more Christ-like in our walk. Um, some of you ask yourselves, do I want to get healthier? It's not something I ask myself a lot. Uh, I'm a pretty healthy guy. I don't get sick very easily. I, I don't get very often. When I do, you'll know it. More rest or less stress. Do I want to have a lot more sleep, a lot more rest? Do I want to be peaceful and uh, not be so stressed in my life? Do I want to get closer to God or get closer to other people? Um, you, didn't, you don't just drift into good things. You got to be real intentional about them. And so tonight I want to talk about some intentional things that we can do to grow so that we can be more and more like Jesus. I am, uh, I'm not a big uh, person on writing down a whole lot of goals and things that uh, I want to achieve in life. Uh, I've counseled my children in that I think they ought to determine what their purpose is and go after it with all of their might. Um, I think I tried to do that in my own life, and that was I wanted to have an idea of where I was headed and then be looking and reaching to achieve some things in my life. Tony and I, at one point in our life, we used to post little things on our refrigerator that would remind us of the things we would love to do. Maybe it was a cruise ship, or maybe it was a vacation, or maybe it was, you know, uh, someplace that we wanted to go or something we wanted to do. And they say that helps you to keep focus on what you want in life and helps you achieve those things. What I've found out in life is that what I set my mind to, I can do. What I set my mind to, I can accomplish it. I was working around here at church yesterday, and I, I'm probably sometimes my own worst enemy, but I talk about my weaknesses, and I exploit them a little bit because I want it, people to know that I, I, I'm not real good at a lot of things. <laughs> and someone said to me, they said, oh, you know what? I think you're a lot better about a lot of things than you let on. And I, it kind of stuck in my head, and I thought, well, you know, that's a little bit like me. Because whatever I've set my mind on, whatever I've set in front of me as a goal or a determination, I have achieved it. Now, that doesn't make me great. doesn't make me anything. But what it says is that where our focus is, there's where we're headed. 
And so I want to remind us that tonight as we look at these things about how do we grow and be more like Jesus. If we don't get our minds focused on being like him, we won't be like him. And we will be farther away from him at the end of 2019. And so we got to have some bit of focus. And some of you are very analytical. You like to write things down. You want to put large paragraphs with it. That's okay. And that's wonderful. It's just not me. So I want you to do it your way. But I want you to be intentional in 2019 about how you want to be more like Jesus. Because I think that's what the scripture is saying to us here. It's telling us that we must be intentional about what we want to be. It says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise. So I would think that the first one is for us to be intellectually intelligent. We're to understand what's going on around us. The scriptures is saying to us that we should not be caught off guard, but that we should be aware of what's happening around us. We were created to become like Christ, so let's use him as our model of growth. He was, he created us in a way that we could see after him. He came to this world and I love it that he did because he lived a life that gives us example. If we just talked about this holy being all the time and we never saw that Jesus understood what it was like to be us, the Bible tells us that he became man just like us. Just like we are. He walked the feet, the, the paths just as we walk them. His finger, his toes got stumped and his, his knees got banged and, and things happened to him. And I, I think that's a good example to us in helping us understand that even if Jesus could go through it, we can. The Bible tells us that Jesus grew up in four ways. He grew in wisdom, he grew in stature, and he grew up in favor with God and man. And we find that in Luke 2, 52. If you want to be more like Jesus, then you have to grow intellectually. You have to dig in and figure out what it is that God's trying to teach you. Proverbs 19, 8 says, Do yourself a favor and learn all you can. Then remember what you learned and you will prosper. So people often ask me, Pastor, how do I get ahead in life? How do things go well for me in life? Things will go well for you when you get in your head that you need to learn all you can about Jesus and that you remember those things in your life and then he will bring about the prosperity in your life. Does that mean that he's going to make us all wealthy? I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think there will always be differences in people. I, don't, I think with ideology and, 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 and stupidity to believe that we can all live in a utopia where all of us are exactly the same in every fine or status in life, I don't think it's real. There will always be people who have more than us and always people who have less than us. That's just life. And we ought to be able to accept that and understand that knowledge. And that way we are not tur- tur- torn apart. I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> then we're not torn apart when someone else does better than we do. Because we understand, we have the knowledge of understanding. That's how God works. Some will do better. Some will not do as well. That's just the way the w- things work in this world. I believe there's a time coming when we get to heaven that we won't live that way anymore. Won't it be wonderful? It tells us in heaven that none of us are going to be fighting and envious and none of us are going to be like the Joneses. Right? Do we have any Joneses in the middle? I don't want to offend anybody. But no, we're not going to care about what our neighbors are doing when we get to heaven because we're so full of that glory. We're so empowered by what God has given and blessed us with at that moment. You must never stop learning. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. We've heard it a zillion times. We've got to keep this mind stimulated. If we don't keep this mind stimulated with growing intellectually, guess what happens? We die. Yeah, 
well, we're, we're all going to die. But so what happens is our minds go off track, right? And, and our minds begin to think on things that we shouldn't think on. And so we got to keep this mind of ours active in learning. And I can tell you that there's not a day that goes by that I'm not learning something from someone. Mostly my wife teaches me a lot of lessons. I go to the school of hard knocks at my house. And so she, she tells me how something should be and I choose to do it a different way. And so then when I get knocked down, she says, I told you. <laughs> it's a school of hard knocks. And so I have to learn that way, but that's how I learn. What is the one thing you'd like to learn? Think about what you would most like to learn. You know what I would like to learn? Is how could God be so graceful and so loving that he could look at me and look at a murderer and see us the same and love us both? I'd love to understand that. Because I don't have that kind of mercy. I don't have that kind of love inside of me. That's something that I've got to learn and I have to work at every single day. Every single day I'm digging in and trying to figure that out. A lot of times people think I, I know the answers when I'm really just asking questions of inquisitiveness to try to figure it out on my own and learn things from other people. I think we have to surround ourselves with people who are younger than us, who are older than us, who are the same place as us, who have had different trials and tribulations than us. If we just hang out with the people who are just like us, we're probably not going to intellectually learn a whole lot. In fact, I think we grow stagnant if someone isn't challenging us. If someone isn't causing us to think about something in a different way. It doesn't have to be spiritual things. I think that we can learn things about nature. I think we can learn things about electricity. God forbid that I'm a loose in that one, but it, I think there's things that we could learn and become better at that would help occupy our minds. I got into this little woodworking thing at home and man, I, I got me some saws and I got me a ping, ping, ping little uh, nail gun and, and I made a bench and I've made a couple things at home and I'm thinking, man, I'm learning how to do something that's so far outside of my skill. And then I'm thinking, you know what? I've admired these carpenters for so long they ain't that smart because I can do it all you got to do is put some psh, 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 psh. there it is and so I'm thinking man and so you learn these new things and suddenly it's like I told my wife one time I said there's an artist inside of me and she's like, oh man. And I said, you know, I can paint. I'm going to be an artist. And so I went to the store and I bought everything of paint they had. I went on eBay and I was bidding away for every paintbrush I could find. And then I got me an easel and then I got me some canvas and I went to painting, me and Bob Ross, and we painted. It was a beautiful little tree right here. And I painted and I could see, I thought, wow, I learned something new. I learned that what I put on there is, is a reflection of how I see it. Nobody else has to see a mountain in my picture. Nobody else has to see a tree or a shrub. It's the way in which I see it, in the way in which I envision it, that gives me the ability to know and think. And so we learn those things. How do those colors go together? I read up on how you mix the color and, and what base you put in. And intellectually, I learned how to do it. And guess what? I painted. I learned something. Maybe there's a class you'd like to take. Maybe something in 2019 that you'd say, I want it to stretch me. We're getting ready to do another Financial Peace University. And it's a great opportunity for you. You may think you've got all of your finances under order. But I want you to know when you learn these new principles, they're powerful. They're powerful. They will change your life. Learn. Maybe you've always wanted to learn another language. Como tal vous? Como estás then? I'm bilingual. I can speak French, Spanish, and English. If, you, if I'm only asking you how you are. 
That's the limit of my abilities. But, that's, but it's good to get in and learn. Learn something new. Find something that needs to be done in church and say, I don't know how to do that, but I'm going to become an expert at it. I'm going to learn it and I'm going to do it. We need people who will help in sound. Maybe you're not a sound expert, but you've got a good ear. You know what sounds good and what doesn't sound good. And you want to get in, you want to learn it. You want to do a camera. You want to do something. You want to learn how to do something that you've never done before. That will occupy your mind and give you new hope and new purpose. Quit living just yesterday and start living for tomorrow. The second point here that we find in this scripture is set a goal of physical growth. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 16, 19 and 20, do you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself for God bought you with a very high price. And when we look at this and say, wow, I want to become physically in, in, uh, involved and engaged in what's going on, have physical growth. That doesn't mean you just grow muscles like these. It means that you are physically engaged in something for Jesus. You are physically engaged in something that's for his work and for his kingdom and furthering what the work that he has for us. The works is large, but the workers sometimes who are physically engaged in it, who want to be involved, they don't want to get in. Sometimes it's about how do I improve my health? How do I get healthy? How do I get to the place that physically I'm doing my very best for as long as I possibly can for the kingdom of God? I sometimes look at people my age, sometimes I look at myself this way. I get up off the couch and <clears throat> takes me a minute to get the hips that greased up and get them working and moving. And I think, boy, you better get moving. <laughs> you better get moving. I see a lot of people in nursing homes who aren't moving and who are steel and can't move and can't get around because they quit moving. And so I keep telling myself, move, boy, move. And so it's important if you want to stay active for the kingdom of God, move. Do something. Get your physical being engaged in something. That's how God has made us to feel our very best. Now, I will tell you that people tell me all the time that there's these, these great endorphins that get released when you run. <laughs> That's not what gets released with me when I run. <laughs> so I'm not a runner. I probably will never, ever be a runner. But you know what? I'm going to be found active and going at it every single day because I want to stay in a condition that I can move and I can do as much as possible for the kingdom of God. Amen? You must honor God with your body. I believe our bodies are temples. God wants you to honor him with your body because it's where he lives. He's in here. He's in here. And if we go looking all crumpled up and all messy and, and untidy and tacky and, and like we're just worn out and on our last leg, you know, who wants to be a part of that? We got to have energy and strength. We got to have power and exuberance because the Bible tells us that we're living. There's something inside of here that's coming out like a great overflowing fountain and it's springing out of us. And so we want to make sure that we're in that place that our physical being can be exercised in that way. Some of you are looking at me like, can we just move on? Okay. It's starting to wear me out. Uh, how can you improve your health? Don't make an unrealistic goal because you'll get discouraged. I've done this most of my life. <laughs> I told somebody the other day, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a silly guy. And um, somebody was talking to me the other day and I used to pray that, <laughs> I don't know if I'll, I'm not telling you guys that story. <laughs> I, I used to pray about things all the time. And, and I had some unrealistic goals about what was going to come out of those prayers. 
I, I had some unrealistic goals and I had to put myself in perspective and think, okay, I'm really never ever gonna look like that. It's, that is, I, for generations, our bodies in the Montgomery's never looked like that. <laughs> And they probably never will. We're never going to be shaped like this. It's always going to be a little like this. Okay? And I'm, I had to come to terms with that. I had to come to terms with the fact that I could exercise. I could do whatever. I could diet. I could do all those things. But there's certain physical aspects about me that God made me just the way I am. And He likes me this way. He wants me to take care of myself. He wants me to be healthy. He wants me to keep my physical being in check because this is this temple. And just as you don't want to live in a house with no paint and, and the gutters falling off and everything mess at your place, he's saying, I don't want to live in a house that's just falling apart because no one's caring for it. He wants us to care for this temple. You might need to get a physical Go to bed earlier, change an eating habit, or start walking during your lunch break. But set something in front of you this year that says, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to do it differently. And then you will see the progress and you will be able to celebrate. I love that. Ray's not here tonight, but I love that I see he's running 10 miles a day. <laughs> you, if, if I take off running, send an ambulance. Okay, because about a block down the road, I'm going to need it. All right, it just doesn't work for me. But I, 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 I'm thrilled about that because you know what? When he started, he never thought he could go a mile. <laughs> and then when he went a mile, he went two. And then two, three. Aaron, last, the fall was... Pre putting your post out there and she was running and she was so proud that she was now up in the miles and running miles when originally we're not even running a block it gives you a sense of self-worth and encouragement when you do something for Jesus when you put a goal in your life and you obtain it it gives you self-worth you feel like you've accomplished something in your life. Set a goal of relationship growth. Philippians 1.9 says, There is my prayer for you that your love will grow more and more, that you will have knowledge and understanding with your love. Jesus wants us to love one another. And so if we're going to be more like him, we need to be seen in 2019 loving more people. Loving more people, opening up to greater relationships, having people into your home and getting to know them, letting them see you and your vulnerabilities, the things that you need help with in life. I believe that relationships are fundamental to the growth of us as a church. We have to have relationships. We'll be starting something in 2019 that will give us a great opportunity to get to know each other, to be a part of each other's lives. And it's because I believe it's really important. You need people who can celebrate with you. You need people who can walk through trials and tribulations with you in your life. And sometimes it's really easy in a church when we have 300 people here on Sunday, it's really easy to get lost in the crowd. Nobody really likes being lost, but there is comfort in being lost because you don't have to tell anybody anything. You don't have to expose any vulnerabilities. We can all look pretty saved on Sunday mornings. But I believe we need help walking through trials and tribulations. When we were talking about becoming pastors, someone told us that had been in the ministry for a long time, they said, be careful, don't build any close relationships with anyone. They told us that we would be hurt by that. That people would exploit us. That people would hurt us. 
several years ago, Tony and I talked about this and it's just not us. <laughs> the greatest thing that's ever happened in our life, in our Christian walk, in our marriage, in raising our children, is having people to walk the path with us. People that cried with us. People who loved with us. People who held our hands when we were struggling. People who could cry out in the night when we needed prayer. People that would say, JD, I'm concerned about your walk. You haven't been to church in three weeks. What's going on? You see, it's easy to get lost, but we need each other. We need each other. You will never find Tony and I as your pastors hiding ourselves. Our lives will be front and center with you. Our lives will include you in every part of it. And the reason is because we need you. We need your love. We need your commitment. We need your strength. We need your encouragement. We need your prayer. We need your friendship. We need it. That's who we are. And I believe that God will honor that in our lives. The greatest lesson you can learn in life is how to love God and other people. Love and genuinely love other people. Love them. Love them. I remember when this person told us this years ago, they said to us that they were a pastor and they, 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 they still have a big church today, but they're lonely because they wouldn't ever allow anyone in to touch their lives. And so they've got a successful church. They're doing fine by the outside look, but inside they're hurting deeply. It's because they haven't let anybody in there. You will see my failures. You will see me struggle. You will see transparent action from me. You will see that from my wife. You will see that, but we ask you, get into the relationship. This year, you will see each other's vulnerabilities and struggles. Raymond, he's always telling me, I don't know what it's like to put wood in a stove. <laughs> I know what it's like, Raymond, to put wood in a stove. Mine didn't burn, but I put it in there. <laughs> and so the guys were teasing me this morning when I, uh, tonight when I walked in the door and they were saying that I didn't know what it was like to ever throw a hay bale up on a truck. <laughs> Uh, I do. <laughs> I know that my daddy had to sometimes say, boy, you will get her done. <laughs> but I know what it's like to do those things. It's okay. It's okay for us to see each other's lives and our vulnerabilities. You're going to see that this year as we dive into small groups, as we dive into meeting in our homes and becoming drawn together. I can remember when my mother passed away, we had a group of friends. It consisted of probably 12 or 14 couples. We were with these people all the time. They're part of our small group, even though small groups weren't cool back in that day. Uh, but they were our people. They were our peeps. We were with those people three, four times a week. And we, were, we loved being with them. And I remember going through that trial with my mother dying. Some would come and watch our children so we could be at the hospital with my mother. Some would be there to give us food. Some would come and just sit with us in a room. Where they didn't even know my mother, but they came to sit with us and just be there with us. I can tell you that those were some of the most comfortable comforting things that ever happened in my life. And it demonstrated to me, I need people. <laughs> I need people. What do you do to develop strong relationships? Do you join in small groups or restore an old relationship? Offer forgiveness or ask for forgiveness? Invite a new friend over for a meal or remember to be very specific in what you need in your life. Do you need somebody to pray with you? Do you need somebody to 
encourage you, to push you forward in your faith, then I would encourage you to build some relationships this year. The enemy loves to isolate us off on our own. And when he can get us isolated off on our own, we're vulnerable. And so he wants us to get engaged. He's telling us that in his word. He says to love. Set a spiritual growth in your life is my final point this evening. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3.18, grow in spiritual strength and become acquainted with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I found in my life that the smallest goal I set in the area reaps the most incredible benefits. When I set something in my life and I say, I'm going to achieve this, I reap such rewards and benefits from it. And so I encourage you, be serious about this spiritual step in your life. Ask God to take you deeper than you've ever been. Ask him to take you deeper to show you new sights, to, to demonstrate his love in a new way to you. You see, I'm okay with yesterday because it was wonderful. We well, had a great day yesterday out on the streets and talking to people. I love that. I absolutely love it. But you know what? That was yesterday. That was yesterday. I got to have something new for today. Today it was to come in. Did you guys hear me snort? Did that come across when I when just, I heard it in my head. I mean, I heard it. That's weird. But when I came in this morning and I said, there's lost people in this place. And then somebody came up to me and said, there's lost people in this place. And I thought, man, God, you were confirming that you're going to do something in here today. And Father, the Spirit is going to move in a mighty way. And guess what? It did. It did. Set a spiritual goal in your life. Ask God to do something new for you. Go deeper. Go deeper. As you think through this one, ask what I can do that will make the biggest difference. Not difference for man to see, but what's the difference in my relationship with you, Lord? What's in my relationship with you? Maybe it's in worship. You know, sometimes we worship because we know all the songs, we know all the words. It makes it funner, it makes it easier for us. But you know what I'm determining in my life is that when I hear the words and I intently learn something new, it becomes even better for me. I am singing songs at my house that I didn't even, I didn't even know six months ago. But you know what? It's become my joy. It's become my step. It's become my great feeling of overwhelmness with Jesus because I'm learning something fresh and something new. I'm having a deeper spiritual experience with Jesus. The other day I got in my office and I, and I thought afterwards, I thought surely Becky thinks I'm crazy. I was in there talking to the Lord as if he were sitting in the chair with me. And I, not with me, but in the chair across from me. And so I was talking to him like I was having a two-way conversation with him. I was answering him and he was talking to me. What she couldn't see is I was reading his word, but I would read the word from him. And then I'd talk to him as if he was right there in the room. And I thought, surely she's going to come in here in a minute and she's going to say, ain't nobody in here. <laughs> but that's new for me I'm having a new dialogue with him I've determined every day this year I am going to stay on my knees for an hour every single day because I want to be humbled before him it's easy to get carried away with this little thing It'll occupy us sometimes. And I just determined, Lord, we're going to get in your word and we're going to get real before you. And God, I'm going to go deeper than I've ever gone because I want more. Yesterday isn't good enough for me. Make it a point to write down some of these things. I'm learning that it is important to write some things down. 
I've asked the staff this year to do something new, and that is to write down four points of the objections, objectives that they want to meet in 2019. Just four things. Four things that at the end of 2019, we're going to look at those four things and we're going to say, did we do these things? Because if we didn't do them, then something's wrong. Something has to be adjusted because we need to be intentional about what we're going to do with God. And as we sit down and we go through these four things together with me as their leader and them working with me, I'm going to make them very specific or I'm going to ask them to get very specific. You can't just say, I want to grow spiritually. You've got to tell me how you're going to do that. Is that an hour in prayer every day? Is that two hours in the word every day? Is that an hour doing this or what is it? Because at the end of the year, we're going to see, did you do it? Because we need to be that intentional about life. Or one day you wake up and you find out life has passed by and you've missed that opportunity. I think it's a great goal to say, I'm going to witness to three people this week. I will share the gospel with three people. Do you know how many people we interact with every single day? Do you know how easy it would be to talk to three people about the gospel of Jesus Christ? It's really quite this simple. Man, I had a great day yesterday. Five people saved in our church. Absolutely wonderful. What is salvation? Oh, well, salvation is when you ask Jesus to come into your heart. Have you ever done that? You can have that conversation with somebody in the grocery line you don't even know. This, my mom opened every conversation at the grocery store like this. I got five kids. How many do you have? <laughs> she didn't know them. It didn't matter to her if she knew them. But before long, she was in a deep conversation with these people. And I would be going, come on, mom. And she'd say, wait a minute. I'm, they're talking about... And they, she was in it. And so I think to myself, man, God, you gave me great skill. I can talk to anyone. I can talk to anyone. All it takes is you to be interested in someone besides yourself. <laughs> if you are interested in somebody other than yourself, do you know what it's like? You know how much you like to talk about yourself? Well, other people like to talk about themselves that much too. So all you have to do is engage them and poof, they're going to talk to you. And when they talk to you, you can share the good news of the gospel with them. You don't have to be holier than thou. You don't have to call out their sin. You don't have to tell them how awful things were in your life. You don't have to tell them any of that. All you've got to do is say, Jesus Christ loves you and his grace is sufficient for you. Do you want to know it? Those of us go on the frontline ministry, you'll know. It's pretty easy to get somebody. We knocked on a door yesterday. And I thought, we're probably going to get beat up here. <laughs> and we knocked on that door, and the door opened just a little bit. And she said, yes. And I said, hey, how are you? She said, I'm great. And I said, can we just talk to you a minute? We're just from the church here in town. Just want to invite you guys over. And she said, you know what? She stepped outside, pulled the door. And she said, you know, my little girl's been asking to go to church every week. She's six years old. I think she'd love that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Nobody had asked. She didn't come. But you know what? When you ask, they come. She didn't slam the door on us. Her, her motorcycle man came up. He came up on a great looking motorcycle. I got pictures of it. I was so impressed. He came up on that motorcycle and he kind of looked and thought, what are these men doing at my house? He got off that motorcycle. I said, man, that is a cool ride right there. Can I have some pictures of it? And before you know it, Brendan and I were friends. <laughs> we were friends. We were, we were getting to know each other. I got to ask him to come to church. So you pray for, for Libby and Brendan that they will come to church with their little girl. We're picking her up on Sunday. They're gone this weekend, but next weekend we're going and we're picking her up and she's going to be here in church. And I'm excited about that. It just takes us 
determining we're going to do something greater than we did last year for Jesus. Do something greater for him. Amen. He's asking us, make it a point. Put these things down. If you need to take some pictures and put them on your refrigerator, put them on your refrigerator. Do something to remember this commitment you're making in your life to demonstrate to God that you want to be more like Him. Be intentional. Look at them every day. Pray about them. Review them. Share them with a spiritual partner. Use these things to help you know Jesus better and grow more like him every single day. Walk carefully, not as the unwise, but as the wise, making the very most of your time. Do not be foolish and thoughtless, but understand and firmly grasp what we can do with the Lord. That's what Ephesians is telling us. Understand what we can do with our creator. Amen. We're getting ready to embark on a, a new adventure as a church. I met with some folks this morning, but just so that everybody knows what's happening, we're getting ready to utilize the social media aspect. We've asked several people to come together to shoot some videos with us that is going to tell some real stories about people right here in our church. Do you know lives have been saved? Paths have been changed? Healings have taken place in our midst? Do you know that people's prayers are answered in our midst? And we haven't taken enough time to tell the stories. And we're going to tell those stories in hope that God will use them to minister to people all around our community and bring people to Jesus. So be in prayer. We're going to be intentional this year about the things we are called to do for Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray with me. Father, I love you and I thank you, God, for this opportunity to share these insights that you have shared with me, Father. I thank you for your word, God. I thank you, Father, for all of the people that you've given us in this church, God. Father, every single person from the leadership all the way through the entire congregation, God. I thank you for every single one of them because you have brought them for such a time as this, God. And I thank you for it. I ask you, Father, as we make these commitments in our life, I pray, Father, that you will help us to grow intellectually. You'll help us to grow physically. You will help us to grow in love. And you will help us, Lord, to grow spiritually. What a great opportunity it was to be together on Sunday night and uh, share God's good news. And so I would ask you, if you've enjoyed the time tonight and that message meant something to you, will you share it with your friends? You can click the share button on your Facebook page and click like and add a comment or two to us to let us know that God is touching your life. We want to be as much a part of your life as you will allow us to be. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to the time we see you soon. God bless you.